Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Yasser Gulfras and uh, I'm your tutor for uh, business taxation series. Uh, this is our first lecture today and uh, this lecture is about the uh, UK taxation for businesses. Uh, by the end of this lecture, you will have a strong knowledge of the key taxes in the UK and how they apply to different situations. Also, you will be able to analyze tax information and explain it clearly, which is a valuable skills for, uh, you know, many aspects. Uh, can, if anyone is there, can you see my screen? Can you hear me? If anyone is there? No. Anyone is there? Okay, let's get started. Uh, this course builds on your existing knowledge of taxes and take it a uh, step further. We will explore familiar taxes like income tax, corporation tax, capital gain tax, uh, inheritance tax, but we will also delve into some new areas, including uh, tax for international businesses and activities, uh, how trusts and tax different taxes, uh, breaks and exemptions. Uh, we'll focus on developing your ability to uh, tax analysis information. We will learn how to break down uh, tax rules, regulations to clear uh, understandable terms. Uh, also, you will be able to identify the relevant taxes that apply to a specific businesses or individuals. Uh, we will practice explaining tax concept to others, whether it is client, colleague or friends. Uh, this course will uh, use real world examples and explanations to make uh, learning about taxes engaging and relevant. Uh, So uh, during my session, if you have any question, please uh, uh, press the, uh, you know, uh, button uh, in chat or left a message then I, or you can raise your uh, voice. I can, you know, uh, reply you back or address your questions. So let's get started. Indicative uh, content, income tax, who pays it? Income tax. Income tax applies to uh, most income earned in the UK, whether uh, from your job, self-employed, employment, uh, property, rental, or investments. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, calculating uh, your bills, we will break down the step to figure out your total taxable income and how much income tax you owe. Uh, national insurance, this is a tax you pay on top of income tax if you are employed or self-employed. It uh, uh, contributes to social security benefits. Uh, reducing your tax bills, we will explore how exemptions and reliefs uh, can help you legally lower your income tax liability. Uh, where you live matters, uh, your Tax situations can be affected by your uh, resident status, uh, like residents, non-residents, or uh, deemed residents and domicile your permanent home. Uh, then uh, capital gain tax, uh, you know, uh, this tax applies to profit you make when you sell certain assets like uh, property or investments. Uh, Calculating gains and losses, we will learn how to figure out the taxable amount when you sell an assets. Uh, assets, uh, when you uh, talk about assets, uh, uh, we will cover how capital gain tax applies to different assets like houses, stocks, and even some personal belongings. Uh, Paying the tax, we will uh, go through the process of calculating and paying your capital gain tax bills. Any questions so far, if anyone is there? Any questions or any concerns? Okay. 
then exemptions and relief for uh, you know taxes uh, we will learn how exemptions and reliefs can help you reduce to even eliminate your gain tax liability you will uh, when you sell certain assets inheritance tax we will explore what inheritance tax is and how it applies to how to calculate the value of the estate for inheritance tax purposes uh, different types of chargeable trans transfers that can trigger inheritance tax uh, how to minimize your inheritance tax liability through exemptions and reliefs so the process of paying inheritance uh, taxes uh, quickly preview of what we will cover in this lecture on capital gain tax or uh, sorry corporation tax it corporation tax applies to the profit made by companies or or you can say business tax uh, made by companies registered in the uk as well as some foreign companies with a presence in the uk uh, we will define taxable total profits and how they are calculated for corporations so this include profits from their core business activities uh, as well as chargeable gains from asset sale uh, just like uh, with income tax there are exemptions and reliefs available available to help companies legally minimize their corporation uh, tax liabilities as well uh, stamp taxes Right. Uh, this, uh, uh, what stamp taxes are and when they apply often on property purchases, uh, different types of stamp taxes liabilities that can arise during transfer of property and other assets. Uh, how exemptions and reliefs can help you reduce or avoid stamp tax payment. Uh, then VAT. Uh, I hope everybody uh, knows about uh, VAT or value added tax is uh, applied on the supply of goods and services. This dedicated lecture will cover what, when VAT applies and which goods and services are exempt. Uh, who needs to register uh, for VAT and the registration requires VAT rates exist in the businesses, two main methods for calculated uh, calculating uh, VAT liabilities, cash accounting and accrual accounting. How to fill out VAT returns from special VAT schemes that can simplify the process of for uh, certain businesses. Uh, income tax calculations. Uh, obviously, he's talking about rates, different rates. Uh, we will uh, discuss, let's start our uh, discussion with income tax with the normal rates, income rate, tax rates, uh, different depending on your income level. So for individual earning between uh, 1 and 37,500 pound, the basic rates is 20% uh, and for uh, dividend, it's 7.5% uh, uh, for those earning between uh, 37,500 and between 150,000. The rate increases to 40% uh, for income and 32.5% for individuals beyond uh, 150,000. The additional rate applies, which is 45% uh, for income and 38.1% uh, uh, for uh, dividends. So when we talk about personal allowances, everyone is entitled to a certain amount of income that they don't have to pay tax on. For the current tax year, the personal allowance is 12,500. Additionally, there is a, a transferable amount of 1250 for some individuals. Uh, residence status is also matter, uh, you know, uh, important in determining tax obligations. Individuals who have been uh, previously resident in the UK may be uh, automatically considered uh, not residents if they have no uh, ties to the uh, UK.
uh, if your income falls between 50 and 60,000 pounds, you will uh, incur a tax charges on child benefit. Uh, you know, uh, received this charge amount to 1% of the child benefit for every 100 pound of income over uh, 50,000 pound. Any questions so far, if anyone is there? Hello, hello. Hello. Yes. So, uh, sorry. Uh, a car benefit uh, percentage, uh, car benefit percentage, uh, the percentage rates for petrol cars and diesel cars. Uh, meeting the, uh, you know, all the two standards are determined based on their uh, CO emissions. For cars, cars emitting 50 grams per kilometer or less than percentage rate in 16%. Uh, for emissions ranging from 51 to 75 gram uh, kilo, uh, per kilometer, it is 90%. Uh, while for emission between 76 and 94 grams uh, per kilometer, it is 22% uh, cars emitting 95 grams per kilometer or more have a percentage uh, rate of 23%. Uh, then, uh, you know, moving on to car fuel benefits, the base figure for calculating is 20, 24,100. This is uh, used to determine the taxable benefits of having access to company provided fuel for uh, private use. Uh, company van benefits, the scale charge is set at 3,430 and the van fuel benefit is 550, uh, 555. Uh, then we are talking about ISA, individual saving accounts, uh, and overall investment limit of 20,000 pound providing uh, individuals with a tax efficient way to save or invest their money. Uh, then property income, uh, a basic rate restrictions applies to 75% of finance costs related to residential uh, properties impacting tax calculating for property owners. When it comes to pension scheme uh, limit, there is an annual allowance uh, minimum allowance and an income limit, the maximum uh, contribution that qualifies uh, for tax relief without any earning is uh, 3,600 pounds. When it comes to pension scheme limit, there's annual allowance and minimum, uh, as I said, 3,600. So for approved mileage allowance for cars, there are set rates, 45p per mile uh, for up to 10,000 miles and 25p per mile. Uh, for mileage exceeding 10,000 uh, miles, uh, lastly, capital allowance dictate rates of allowances for uh, different assets for plant and machinery. The main pool allowances 18% uh, here, as you can see. Uh, then uh, special rate pool 6% uh, for motor cars and rates vary based on uh, CO emission uh, uh, ranging from 100% for new cars with emissions up to 50 grams per kilometer to uh, six percent for cars with emission over one hundred and ten, uh, you know, uh, grams per kilometer. 
any questions or any concerns can you see my screen if anyone is there or can you hear my voice anyway uh, next is annual investment allowances this allowances allows businesses to deduct the uh, full value of qualifying expenditure on assets from their taxable profits the rates of allowances is 100% uh, meaning businesses can de deduct the uh, entire cost of eligible assets up to limit of uh, 100,000 pound. Uh, moving on to cash basis accounting, this method allows small businesses to calculate their taxable profit based on money in and out of their businesses rather than using our traditional accounting methods, the revenue, uh, uh, revenue a limit for using cash basis accounting is 150,000 uh, pound. Uh, also, uh, then next uh, corporation tax, uh, we have corporation tax, which is the tax levied on the profit of companies for the financial years 2019. The corporation tax rate is 10%. This applies to profit up to 150,000 pound. Uh, value added uh, uh, value added is a consumption tax levied on goods and services. The standard rate of VAT is 20%. Uh, there are registrations and uh, deregistrations limits for VAT, which are 85,000 pound and 83,000 uh, pound respectively. Inheritance tax is a tax of the uh, estate, the property, money, and uh, pro, uh, processions of uh, someone who has died. Nil rate uh, band is 325,000 uh, pound. Then uh, there is a residence nil rate band 150,000. The rate of tax on the access over the nil rate band is 20% for lifetime gifts and 40% for death. Capital gain tax is a tax on the profit made from selling certain assets, normal uh, you know, rates of capital gain taxes and 10% uh, for base rates, taxpayers and 20% of in uh, for higher uh, you know, rate taxpayers for residential property, the rates are 18% and 28% respectively. Uh, then uh, national insurance contributions, uh, national, there are obviously four classes. Uh, national tax uh, insurance contributions are payment made by employees and employers uh, to fund state benefits. The class one contribution rate is 12% with a profit threshold of uh, £8,632 per year for employees and a rate of 38% for employers on earning above 6,000, uh, 650,000 one pound per year. Uh, interest rates are important in financial calculations. The assumed uh, official interest rate is 2.5%, while the Bank of England base rate is 0.50% uh, uh, as per 2016. You know, uh, Finally, there are standard penalties for uh, tax errors, which may based on taxpayers' behavior. For example, uh, the minimum penalty for uh, deliberate and con concealed errors is 100%, while the uh, minimum penalty for prompt disclosure of a, a careless error is uh, 5%. UK tax system, several uh, tax systems, several purposes, including funding government expenditures, uh, uh, redistributing uh, wealth, influencing economic behavior, and promoting social objectives. Uh, tax law and uh, uh, guidance in the uh, realm of tax uh, law there are several sources and provide the foundation for understanding and applying tax regulations these including uh, statute law 
statute statute law uh, detailed regulations in statutory statutory instruments and hm revenue and customs uh, guidance Uh, methods of uh, operating uh, a business involves navigating various tax consideration depending on the structure of the business, sole traders, partnership, and companies are common form of businesses. Entities such subject to different tax implications. Uh, when we talk about sole traders, and partnerships are typically taxed on their trading profit as income tax, and they may also be liable for uh, capital gain tax on uh, gains from business assets. Additionally, they are required to pay national insurance contributions as well. Types of uh, income. Income can take various forms of individuals, including income from their businesses, uh, trading income, employment income, bank and building society, interests, uh, property income, and dividends. So here is uh, tax years runs from 6 April to 5th April 2016-17. So uh, basically, you know, all these types of incomes are considered in the income tax competition uh, for a tax year which runs from uh, 6th April to April 5th of the following years. For example, 16th, uh, 17th tax years runs from April 6, 2016, 6th April to 5th of April 2017. So understanding the different sources of income is essential for accurately uh, calculating and reporting taxable income to HR, uh, HMRC. Any questions so far, if anyone is there? Okay, uh, next is a total net taxable incomes. Uh, understanding the concept of total net taxable income is crucial for tax computations. Computations, total income in, 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 encompasses all type of uh, income earned by an individual's net income is uh, derived by subtracting any trade losses from total income Taxable income, on the other hand, is calculated by deducting the personal allowance from net income. Uh, personal allowance's current rate is £12,500. Uh, this is he's talking about between 16 uh, and 17, which was uh, £11,000. Tax computation. Uh, in this involves a structured approach to calculate the tax payable based on different types of income. Uh, firstly, total uh, non-saving savings in trust and dividends income are calculated separately. Next, the personal allowance is deducted from each category of income, starting with non-saving, then savings, and finally uh, dividends. Uh, taxation of income follows a, a hierarchical order. Non-saving income is taxed uh, first, followed by saving income, and finally uh, dividend income. Uh, different tax rates applies to each type of income. Uh, Non-saving income is taxed at uh, 20 percent base rates 40 percent higher rates and 45 percent additional rate uh, saving income is subject to zero percent starting rate up to five thousand pound followed by 20 40 or uh, 45 percent rates uh, then when we talk about dividend income is taxed at zero uh, percent uh, uh, for the first five thousand pound 75 7.5 is a, a basic rates, uh, then 32.5% uh, higher rates or 38.1% uh, is additional rate. Tax avoidance or evasion. Uh, tax avoidance and tax evasion are two uh, distinct concepts with significant legal uh, implications. So don't, don't mix, uh, you know, both of them. Uh, tax evasions uh, involves 
illegal activities aimed to deliberately deceiving tax authorities, you know, uh, to reduce tax liabilities. This can lead to severe penalties, including fines and imprisonments. So in, in, con in contrast, tax evasion uh, avoidance uh, uh, refers to legal uh, exploitation of loopholes in uh, tax legislation to maximize tax, uh, minimize tax liabilities, while uh, currently legal tax avoidance may still attract uh, scrutiny from tax authorities and public opinion. Uh, tax planning involves uh, legitimate uh, strategy to utilize uh, available tax relief in uh, manners intending to minimize tax liabilities, ensuring compliance with tax laws and uh, regulations. Allowable and disallowable expenditures. Uh, when computing taxable trading profits, it is essential to distinguish between allowable and disallowable uh, expenditures. Uh, allowable expenditures refer to expenses that can be deducted from the uh, account profit to calculate taxable trading profits, while disallowable expenditures cannot be deducted uh, and must be added back to the accounts profit. Uh, disallowable expenditures includes fines and penalties, depreciations, amortization, salaries, interest paid to sole traders or partners, private expenditures of the trade, capital expenditures, uh, entertaining expenses, legal fees relating to capital item and may expenses not incurred wholly and exclusively, inclusively, uh, inclusively uh, for trade purposes. Political donations and charitable donations are typically uh, disallowable ex except uh, for small and local donations. Employees uh, parking fines incurred while on the employer's businesses are allowed, but this does not apply to companies' initial repairs to make an asset uh, fit for use rate, disallowable capital expenditures, while repairs to remedy normal uh, wear and tear are, uh, you know, allowable. Uh, staff entertaining is allowed as an expenses and fees relating to the renewal of a short lease are also allowable. However, general provisions are disallowable, although specific provisions may be allowed. Uh, analyzing income and income tax liabilities related to overseas aspects, you know, of organizational activities requires understanding the tax implications for individuals working abroad temporarily or on an ongoing basis. So basically, if you work abroad temporarily or casually for less than one complete uh, tax year, you are likely to remain residents and taxable in the UK. However, uh, your residence position will be depend on the statutory residence test. Uh, you may need to file a UK self-assessment tax return to report overseas earnings and claim double taxation relief. If you work abroad, full time for the entire tax years and meet strict conditions such as spending fewer than 91 days in the UK and having fewer than 31 uh, UK work days, you may uh, cease to be a UK resident. So in this case, uh, you would not be able to UK tax on earnings from outside the UK. So you may also be entitled to split the tax years into a residence and non-residence part. Uh, potentially resulting in a refund on pre-departure uh, employment earning. Here are his examples. Uh, uh, illustrate how the residency of a, a company incorporated overseas is determined if the central management and control of the company are exercised in the UK. Uh, as indicated by UK-based directors holding a board meeting in the UK, 
uh, the company is considered residents in the UK. So, however, if the directors were based overseas and held uh, board meetings overseas, the company would likely to treat it as resident overseas. Any questions so far? Any? So here is the another example uh, focuses on the tax treatment of overseas uh, dividends received by UK residence company. If the UK company owns 50% uh, or uh, less of the uh, voting power, Uh, for the uh, 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 overseas company, the uh, dividend is exempt from UK corporations uh, tax, but included as uh, uh, you know franked investment income. If the UK company owns uh, more than fifty percent of the voting power, so the dividend is exempt from UK corporations tax, not included as a franked investment income. So regarding overseas branches of UK companies, 100% uh, of branch profit, 100% uh, of uh, you know, uh, uh, branch profits are assessed to UK corporation tax with a double taxation relief providing where the profits are also taxed overseas. Uh, relief is limited to the amount of UK tax on the branches profit and any uh, trading losses can be uh, relieved against UK profit. Explain the application of additional examples and relief. Uh, capital allowance uh, 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 computations. Uh, when computation, uh, computing, uh, you know, uh, computing capital allowance, it is important to set up separate column for different types of assets like, uh, you know, uh, main pole. This includes most assets ex except for those specifically allocated to other pools. Then special rate pools. This pool is for assets with the long life or those with high capital costs. Then short life assets. These are assets expected to have a short life, typically less than four years. Uh, private use assets for sole traders only. This category contains cars with uh, you know CO emissions over 130 gram. It worth nothing that companies do not have uh, private use assets as this category is specific to uh, sole traders. Allowances. Uh, Annual investment allowance uh, periods spanning 1st January 2016. So annual investment uh, account allowance or AIA, this allowance allows businesses to uh, deduct the full value of qualifying expenditures on assets up to specified limited from April 1st, 2014 to April 1st, 2016. So the AIA the limit was 500,000 per year since January 1st, 2016. It has been reduced to 200,000 per year. Uh, the annual investment uh, uh, allowance can be scaled up or down for short or long period of account. And when period span January 1st, 2016, the AIA is pro uh, rated between the periods. Uh, allowances two. Uh, WDA uh, written down writing down allowance allowances uh, allow uh, this allow businesses to deduct a percentage of the assets value each year. Uh, for cars, the WDA rate is eighteen percent per year. Uh, the main pool and eight percent per year in the special uh, rate pool based on a reducing balance basis. Uh, writ writing down. Uh, Allowance can be scaled up or down for short or long period of account and reduced writing down allowance can be claimed. So first year allowance, this allowance uh, allows businesses to deduct 100% of the asset value in the first year. It is not uh, prorated for short or long periods. Uh, first year allowance is available for 
low emissions cars and energy water saving plant with different threshold for uh, CO2 uh, emissions determining uh, location to the remain pool or specific rate pool. So understanding uh, uh, these allowances is essential for businesses to effectively manage their capital expenditures and optimize tax efficiency uh, within the framework of capital allowances computations. Yeah, any questions so far? Anyone is there if anyone is there? Okay. So uh, allowances to uh, again uh, continuing uh, you know with the allowances of for private uh, use assets private use assets refers to assets between uh, privately by a sole traders uh, uh, partners excluding employees when uh, accounting for these assets the full value of the assets and any associated allowances should be uh, shown in the column so however uh, only the businesses proportion of uh, allowances can be claimed private use assets are not pooled and balancing adjustments may arise in two scenarios uh, upon secessions to uh, deal with the balance remaining after deductions of disposal uh, uh, proceeds and when a non pooled asset is sold or when a column balance becomes negative. Uh, short life assets also fall under private use assets. Uh, short life assets are those assets not considered to have a long life for accounting periods. Uh, if uh, an asset is not considered short life, the balance of expenditures uh, must be transferred back to the main pool and uh, election can be made to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, uh depool assets then uh, depooled assets must be disposed of within eight years of the end of the period of acquisition so short life assets are not considered capital assets and their treatment different from other assets Taxable total profits uh, represent a company's overall taxable incomes, calculating, uh, agreeing various source of income and chargeable gains, and then deducting qualifying charitable uh, uh, donations. Uh, taxable total profit includes interest income from non-trading sources uh, minus interest payable on non-trading loans, property businesses income which is treated as a single source of income and calculated uh, similarly to uh, trading profits. Uh, interest payable on non-trading uh, loans including loans used to purchase uh, rental properties or shares in subsidiary uh, property business income is computed similarly to uh, trading profit, although in the business tax context, you may not be uh, required to calculate property business income directly. Uh, however, you may need to include this income when determining taxable uh, total profit. Any questions so far, if anyone is there? Uh, accounting periods, uh, companies are required to pay corporation tax, corporation uh, tax on their taxable total profit for each accounting period. Accounting periods cannot exceed 12 months if a company's accounting covers a period exceeding 12 months, it must be split into two accounting periods. Uh, for example, if A Limited, uh, here you can see that prepares account for 15 months ending on, uh, you know, uh, 31st December 16, they, these would be in 12 months accounting period ending on 30th of September 16 and a second three months accounting period ending on 30th of uh, December 16. Uh, when a period of accounting exceeds 12 months, profits are divided between the uh, accounting period as follows trading income uh, is uh, time appro 
uh, apportioned before capital allowances are deducted. Uh, capital allowances are computed separately for each period interest income is allocated to the period in which it uh, occurs. Uh, property business uh, income and other incomes are time uh, apportioned gains are allocated to the period in which they are uh, realized. Uh, qualifying charitable donations are allocated to the period in which they are uh, paid. Corporation uh, tax payable. Uh, corporation tax payable is calculated by applying the corporation tax rate to the taxable uh, total profit. So the corporation uh, tax rate is set for financial years with the financial years running from April 1st in one year to March 31st in the next year. Uh, for example, the financial years uh, 2016 runs from April 1st, 2006 to uh, March 31st, 2017. So the formula for uh, computing corporation tax is simply multiplying the taxable total profit by the applicable corporation tax rate, which is uh, typically 20 percent as per uh, 16, 17. Any questions so far? Continuing business uh, involves understanding the basis uh, period for tax assessment, which is typically uh, the accounting period ending in the relevant tax years. For example, if a a sole trader's accounting period ends on December 31st each uh, year. The basis period for the tax year 16-17s will be the year ending on December 31st, 2016. Opening years of businesses operations, special uh, basis period uh, rules apply. Uh, you know, in the first year, uh, the basis period states uh, starts from the date of commencement and ends of the following April 5th. Second year, if the accounting period ending is 12 months or more, the period is considered. If less than 12 months, the first 12 months of trading are considered. The basis period ends on the accounting dates in the third year. Uh, in if there is uh, no accounting dates in the second years, the entire year itself from April 6th or uh, to April 5th is considered as the uh, basis period. Uh, overlap profit, overlap profits occur when profits are taxed twice in the op years of businesses. These profits may be relieved upon secession of the businesses. The assessment focus involves uh, ensuring that total taxable profits minus losses equal the total actual profit minus actual losses over the entire life of the business. Uh, final year of the business operations, uh, the biz, uh, basis period starts at the end of the uh, previous year's basis periods and ends of the secessions. For example, if uh, uh, Nitin sees tradings on, uh, 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 sees trading uh, on September 30th, 2016, and the basis period for the final year starts from uh, July 1st, 2015 and ends on September 30th, 2016. Overlap profits are deducted from the final year's uh, assessments. Change of accounting dates. Uh, changing the accounting dates involves different consideration based on the length of the gaps between the old and new accounting dates. If the gap is uh, uh, less than 12 months, the gap is taxed in the year of changes. Uh, if the gap is greater than uh, 12 months, overlap profit are brought forward from the year before the change are uh, relieved. Any questions so far? Okay, so 
NIN number or national insurance contributions for the self-employed consist of, uh, you know, class four and two contributions. Uh, four are uh, calculated at 9% of profit between upper and lower limit, uh, main rate and 2% above the upper limit, additional rates. Class two national insurance contributions are flat weekly amount, but they are not applicable if profit fall uh, below the small profit threshold the upper limit for national insurance contribution is 43,000 pound and the lower limit is 8,060 for the tax years 2016 and 17. Individuals uh, carry forward of trading losses. Uh, when a business experiences a trading loss during a certain period, it is treated similarly to how a taxable trading profit would be calculated. Uh, this loss needs to be allocated to the appropriate tax year, such as assigning a loss from the year ending December 31st, 2016 uh, to the tax year 2016-17. Uh, these losses can be carried forward to uh, offset against future profits of the same trade, but they must be uh, deducted from the earliest available uh, profits and cannot be served for the uh, later use. There is no limit to uh, how many years these losses, uh, uh, you know, can be carried forward. Uh, carried forward. Uh, uh, but if the nature of the trade changes, further relief may not be available. <clears throat> individuals' uh, deductions from total income, uh, trading loss incurred by individuals can be deducted from their uh, total income in the tax year of the uh, loss or the proceeding tax year. It is important to note that Partial claims are not allowed. The entire loss must be deducted if there is sufficient income available to uh, absorb it. Uh, here is an example as well. For example, individuals who incurred a trading loss for the year ending September 30th, uh, 16th, she had profits for the year ending September 30th, 17th. The loss can be set against the profits of the uh, respective years uh, starting with the year of the loss. So uh, uh, before recommending uh, this relief, it is essential to consider uh, whether using the loss would result in the waste of personal allowances or annual exempt amount as this can significantly impact tax planning strategies. Uh, companies trading losses for companies are the losses incurred in their uh, trade activities. Uh, these losses can be set off against uh, other profits of the sum accounting periods, profit of the preceding 12 months or carried forward to set against the first available profit for the same trade. Uh, it is important that these losses must be uh, relieved before considering qualifying charitable donations and any unrelieved losses may carry forward for future use. Uh, reliefs and claims, next one. Uh, trading losses, uh, relief. Companies have the options to claim reliefs against trading losses in different ways. Relief can be made against others profit of the sum. Same accounting period reliefs can be claimed against profit of the preceding 12 months. Uh, relief is not claimed under the first two months. It is automatically given against the first available profit uh, from the same trade tax planning strategies should aim to receive uh, relief losses against profits taxed at the highest rates considering the timing and uh, potential waste of any qualifying uh, charitable, donation, uh, charitable donations for personal allowance. Any questions or any concerns?
okay companies uh, losses again when companies incur capital losses these losses can only be offset against current or future gains uh, never against income additionally they cannot be carried back to offset against past uh, gains trading loss performance uh, pro forma for trading losses involves you know tracking trading profit and losses over different uh, accounting periods so this include deducting uh, any losses uh, brought forward from previous years and considering other income net chargeable gains and total profits a uh, loss relief is the uh, then calculated considering options such as uh, carry back and qualifying charitable donations relief uh, loss relief uh, planning for loss relief involves considering the timing of relief for maximizing maximum benefits uh, earlier relief can uh, provide a cash flow advantage and offsetting losses uh, against profit in years with higher tax rates uh, can result in greater saving however it is essential to be uh, mindful of potential waste of uh, you know uh, QCD relief uh, uh, if there are no remaining profits to offset against uh, other losses uh, losses relief for property losses involves offsetting these losses against total income before any uh, QCD relief is applied for the current period excess losses can be carried forward for future offsetting capital losses on the other hand are automatically set against current years against and can also be carried forward for future gains so it is important to note that uh, capital losses can only be relieved against gains not against uh, income any questions so far any concerns or questions if anyone is there okay so uh, to understand chargeable gains and liabilities for capital gain tax involving overseas aspects of organizational activities we need to consider three key elements a chargeable disposal this includes actions such as selling gifts or destroying assets which may result in chargeable gains then chargeable persons uh, both companies and individuals can be subject to capital gains tax liabilities and then uh, chargeable assets most assets are subject to capital gain tax when disposed of with exemptions for certain assets like cars specific uh, you know chattels uh, understanding these elements uh, uh, you know uh, uh, elements helps in analyzing and managing tax liabilities related to capital gains especially in international context uh, understanding capital gains for individuals when we talk about capital gains for individuals we are basically uh, looking at the profit you make when you sell something for more than uh, you paid for it so the compute this again you subtract the cost of acquiring the assets from the proceeds you get when you sell it so now what comes as cost well uh, it includes things like the original price you paid for the assets you you any money you spent to improve it and any cost you had uh, when you final uh, bought it charge uh, capital gain tax for in, uh, individuals uh, the charge to capital gain tax for individuals uh, you get to deduct something called the capital gain tax annual exempt amount uh, which is basically a tax free allowances uh, the rate of tax you pay depend on your overall income if you are a higher or additional rate taxpayer you will uh, generally pay 20 percent on your gain so if you are in the basic rates uh, bracket and your gains fall within a certain threshold, you might pay just 10%. So for gains made on selling residential properties except your main home, 
the rates are a bit higher, usually 18 to uh, 18 or 28 uh, percent. Loss for individuals, if you end up making a loss instead of a gain, uh, you can deduct these allowable losses from any gains you have made in the same tax year. So if you can't use up all your losses in one year, you can carry them forward to offset against future gains. Uh, however, there are some rules about how much these losses can use in any given year. Uh, computing gains and losses for a company. Uh, companies also have to deal with the capital gains and losses. These the calculation is similar to what individuals do, but companies get something called uh, indexation allowances, which adjust the cost of the assets based on inflation. This helps to account for the fact that money losses value over time due to inflations. Uh, more uh, computing gains and losses for companies indexation allowances is calculated based on the original cost of the asset and any enhancement expenditures made over time. Uh, it is important to note that indexation allowances does not apply to disposal cost only to the actual cost of the asset and any improvements uh, made to it. Uh, part disposal uh, when you only sell a part of something uh, you own, like a piece of land or share of a property, it is called a part disposal. In these cases, you don't include the full cost of the asset in your calculations. Instead, you only consider a portion of it. Uh, for other costs like those related to the part you still own, uh, you including uh, include a fraction of them in your calculations. Uh, this fraction is determined by the proportion of what you have sold compared to what you still have. Uh, Peter sold an uh, uh, example here, if you can see. Uh, you know, uh, Peter sold a quarter in trust in land he bought for £30,000. The sale price was £18,000 and there were £1,000 in cost related to the sale. So uh, the market value uh, of the remaining three quarters of the land is 36,000 uh, pound. The, to calculate the chargeable gain, we subtract the cost from the proceeds of the sales. So in this case, the chargeable gain is, uh, you know, uh, 7,000 pound. Uh, Chattels is an item of intangible movable property for, for example, paintings. So, like, they have specific rules regarding gains and losses for taxation. Gains on chattels sold for 6,000 or less, as well as wasting chattels with a useful life of 50 years or less are exempt from taxation. Uh, for gains on chattel sold for more than £6,000 where the cost was less than £6,000, a maximum gain calculations applies additionally losses on a chattel sold for under £6,000 are, are restricted to prevent tax avoidance. Uh, connected persons, be, uh, disposal between connected persons are treated differently. Uh, for tax purposes with the market value of the assets be being used instead of the actual proceeds, losses on disposal or connected persons can only be set off against, uh, you know, gains on disposal to the uh, same connected persons, ensuring fair taxations. Uh, spouses and civil partners uh, Disposals between spouses or civil partners are considered no gains, no loss. Transactions meaning they do not result in uh, taxable gains or oversee or, or, or sorry uh, gains or losses. Uh, this allows for the transfer of assets between uh, spouses or civil partners without uh, uh, you know triggering a tax liability. Uh, they receive uh, 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 base cost of uh, uh, 
further disposal is set at the transfer's original cost, ensuring that any, any future gains are correctly uh, taxed. Uh, IHT or inheritance tax basis. Uh, okay, so let's discuss the basis of inheritance tax, which is a tax you need to pay on the assets you leave beyond, behind when you, you know, pass away. So first step, we have got the concept of transfer of value that basically means the action, any actions that changes who owns something and has a potential tax consequences. Uh, now, what it comes to inheritance tax, we need to know what chargeable property discovers all the assets you own, uh, like money, property and investments and who's on the hook for paying this tax well it's uh, it's uh, uh, it, it, it's it's the chargeable person which typically means individuals now everything you own it's included in the calculations there are no free passes or exemptions when it comes to inheritance tax uh, occasions of charges death gifts with then seven years pre-death or other lifetime gifts. Uh, lifetime gifts, uh, these are essentially any gifts you make while you are still alive. They are not exempt from inheritance tax or classified as, uh, you know, PET. Uh, the amount of tax you pay for these gifts is calculated based on their value at the time they are given. So when it comes to who pays the tax, it depends if you are a receipt of the gift, receiver of the gifts, you might have to pay it. But sometimes the person giving the gift, the donor has to pay it, especially if they have set it up that way. So there are different tax rates for lifetime gifts and those made after uh, someone passes away. For example, if you give something uh, away and then die within seven years, there might be additional tax to pay. Any questions so far, if anyone is there? Any questions, if anyone is there? Okay. So, inheritance tax uh, computations, the gifts, uh, uh, you know, uh, First, we have the concept of transfer of value, which refers to the giving of gifts assets. Uh, these are some specific exemptions and allowances that can uh, reduce the amount of tax you owe. One important principle to consider is the uh, uh, dimin uh, diminution in the value of principles, uh, which takes into account any decrease in value of an asset when calculating tax. So when it comes to calculating the tax, we start with the chargeable transfer account, then we subtract any value available uh, nil rate based, which is a tax free allowances. The remaining amount is what taxable and we pay the appropriate tax rate to it. Uh, if you see here for lifetime gifts, the tax rate can be either 20% or, uh, you know, 25%. Uh, depending on who responsible for paying the tax. So for gift made within seven years before someone's death, the tax rate is usually uh, 40%. Nil rate uh, uh, bands available. Uh, understanding nil rate uh, band is the amount of money you can give away tax free either during your lifetime or upon your death. Uh, when calculating the lifetime tax on a chargeable lifetime transfer, we start with the nil rate band available at the time of gift. Uh, then we subtract any, uh, you know, CLT uh, made uh, calculation, uh, CLT or calculation of lifetime tax within the seven years before the gifts was given. This gives us the remaining nil rate band available for tax calculations. Uh, similarly, when calculating the death tax on CLT and potentially exempt transfers, uh, PETs made within uh, seven years, uh, uh, we 
starts with the uh, nil rates bands available at the time of death. We then subtract any you know CLTs and chargeable pets made within the seven years before deaths to find the remaining nil rate uh, band available. Any questions so far if anyone is there? Okay, so further uh, computational points. Uh, gifts made within, uh, you know, uh, three to seven years uh, before death may qualify for, uh, you know, tapper relief, which reduces the amount of tax on based on how many years before death the gifts was made. Uh, the percentage reduction in tax ranges from 20% to 80%. Uh, depending on the number of years before death. So it is important to note that any lifetime tax paid on a CLT uh, made within uh, seven years before death can be uh, credited against the death tax on, but it won't result in a refund of tax already paid. Further computational uh, points, a tax rate of 40% applies to the tax payable amount of gifts made within seven years before death. This calculation involves the following steps. Uh, you know, uh, tax on taxable amount multiplied by the transfer uh, taxable amount of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, of the gifts by 40%. And then, uh, you know, tapper reliefs may be uh, a percentage provided in separate documents to the tax on the taxable amount that reduces the amount of uh, tax on. So, uh, lifetime tax paid for certain lifetime gifts subtract any lifetime inheritance tax already paid. Uh, then uh, you know less lifetime tax paid only you know uh, subtract the amount from step four if applicable from the chargeable percentage to arrive at the final uh, inheritance tax due on the gift any questions so far if anyone is there summary of exemptions and uh, relief several exemptions and reliefs can be applied to reduce inheritance tax liability so uh, here you can see the summary of the relevant ones lifetime gifts uh, only and lifetime gifts and deaths estate so uh, annual uh, exemptions each person can give away three thousand pound per tax years without incurring uh, you know uh, inheritance tax uh, but only if the uh, you know current year allowances is used first lifetime gifts and death estate uh, uh, you know uh, inter spouse civil partners exemption gifts between spouses or civil partners are generally exempt from inheritance tax uh, then small gifts you can give away small gifts of up to 2000 or sorry 250 pound per person uh, per tax year without affecting your uh, inheritance tax liability. Uh, marriage exemption, certain tax-free amount can be gifted towards a child or a grandchild's wedding, 5,000 pound per uh, parent, 2,500 pound per, uh, you know, grandparents and 1,000 pound for others. Uh, normal expenditures out of income gift made from regular income that do not impact your standard of living are typically exempt from uh, inheritance tax. Next is uh, death state. Yes, so uh, death states, uh, death states, uh, free, uh, freehold property, you know, less repayments, not endowment, mortgage, 
Uh, uh, just give me a second, guys. Uh, just let me put charger on. So freehold, uh, death estate, freehold property, less uh, repayment, note endowment, uh, mortgage, lifetime insurance policy, proceeds, not current, uh, MV, so all other assets, uh, uh, car shares, uh, banks and building societies, accounts, assets held in, uh, investment, saving accounts, and then uh, out, uh, uh, debts due to uh, deceased, uh, less, less outstanding debts incurred for valuable consideration, uh, funeral uh, uh, expenses, uh, less exempt uh, 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 legacies, uh, gross chargeable estate. So uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, this is the final value of the state after all deductions are uh, applied. Uh, nil rate bind residence, residence nil rate bind uh, inheritance tax on the death estate is calculating as, you know, uh, applies to deaths of on 6th of uh, uh, April 17th or later. So uh, gross chargeable state refers to the value of obtaining in, you know, basically step four. Uh, subtract the followings from the, uh, you know, uh, sorry, here. So uh, here I just will, you know, uh, basically uh, chargeable refers to the value of four steps. Uh, deduction, subtract the following form of the gross chargeable state. Uh, nil rate uh, tax free allowances for the value of person's residence passed on the uh, direct uh, descendants and a uh, tax free allowances applied to the total estate value of gifts made in the previous seven years uh, already uh, you know uh, included in the gross chargeable states are deducted here to avoid double exemptions. So this is the remaining amount after subtracting all de deductions from the gross chargeable. Uh, states. So inheritance tax uh, uh, multiply the taxable amount by 40% to determine the uh, final inheritance tax liability on the death states. Then uh, residence nil, uh, nil rate band introduced in uh, April uh, 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 6th, 7th, 2017. Uh, is uh, additional tax-free allowances available for a state that include a home uh, passed on to direct descendants, children's or grandchildren's. The maximum uh, residential uh, residence nil uh, rate band for the tax years 2017-18 was 100,000 pound. Uh, it is uh, uh, important to you to keep in mind that this amount may charge in future uh, tax years. Payment of uh, IHT or inheritance tax uh, depends on the type of transfers, chargeable lifetime trusts, uh, transfers between April uh, 6th and September 30th. Uh, payment is due on falling 30th of April. Uh, then CLT is transferred between October 1st and April 5th. Uh, payment is due six months after the end of the month uh, uh, the transfers took place. Uh, then uh, PET or potentially exempt transfers becoming chargeable due to uh, death payments is uh, due six months after the end of the month of death. Uh, additional tax, uh, 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 you know, uh, payment is due six uh, additional uh, Tax due to CLT with the seven years before death payment is due six months after the end of the uh, death. States uh, 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 at death inheritance tax is generally due six months after the end of the month of death. 
Uh, however, if state uh, amount in accounts are delivered to uh, HM uh, or C earlier, the payment may be due at that time. Uh, inheritance tax planning uh, use available exemptions and reliefs, gifts, assets during lifetime. Donor may survive seven years. Stepper relief if survive three years annual exemptions available, freeze value of gifts. So basically, uh, here are some strategies to consider for minimizing inheritance tax liability. Uh, utilize exemptions and reliefs, take full advantage of all available exemptions and reliefs, such as the annual exemptions, spouse, civil partners, exemptions, and small gift exemptions, gift assets during lifetime gifts, Assets during your lifetime can reduce the value of your uh, estate and potentially lower your, uh, you know, inheritance tax bill. Uh, there are some conditions to consider also, you know, uh, the donor must survive for seven years uh, uh, after the gift to avoid inheritance tax. Uh, then the, uh, you know, uh, annual exemptions allowed for tax uh, free gifting each year. Uh, Tapper uh, relief may apply to gifts made within, uh, you know, here uh, uh, of death reducing the IHT charge. The annual exemptions follows for tax-free gifting each year. Uh, gifting assets freezes uh, their value at the time of the gift, potentially reducing the inheritance tax liability uh, compared to if the assets value increases over time. Uh, married couples and civil partners uh, married couples and civil partners can benefit from transferring any uh, unused nil rate band uh, from the final spouse to uh, die to the surviving spouse this can significantly uh, reduce the overall inheritance tax burden for the couples okay So, uh, here are, you know, here you can see uh, some of the key points. Uh, the unused portion of the, uh, you know, NRB uh, from the first death can be added to the NRB available at the time of the second death. So to uh, the claim, uh, this benefit and application must be made within two years of the second uh, spouse death. That's it for today. Uh, here are some uh, websites for your references. If you want to read about more, you can visit accaglobal.com uh, exam supports, uh, which is evaluate income and income tax liabilities in relation to trusts then you can uh, further uh, study for assess the use of stamp taxes. Uh, yes, uh, for further books or articles, you can visit your Moodle or learning management system. Uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. So if you have any questions, any concerns or issues, uh, you can drop me an email at yasir at ukversity.co.uk. Uh, thank you very much for uh, today's session and I'll see you tomorrow at uh, 11 for uh, our uh, second uh, session of uh, UK business tax sessions. Thank you very much everyone and uh, have a good weekend ahead. Uh, thanks for now and bye.